given this, um, what we want to do is to figure out how um, the workers, the L workers or in the firm, are allocated between recruiting and producing. So we're going to describe the allocation of workers between recruiting and producing using uh, a recruiter-producer ratio. So we're going to introduce tau and tau it's going to be equal to r, the number of recruiters, divided by n, the number of producers. And we'll call it the recruiter producer ratio. Um, so that recruiter producer ratio, it's capturing how firms decide to allocate their workers between the two tasks at hand, the producing part and the recruiting part. And uh, so the first task that we have to do um, as we try to uh, compute the labor demand is to figure out what is that recruiter producer ratio and what it depends on. Okay, so let's try to do that. So we're trying to figure out what is that. Okay. Um, so let's try to put ourselves in the shoes of the firm and figure out a little bit why they would need to have recruiters. No. So how many jobs are lost per unit time for, uh, in the firm? So if you want, let's think about a unit time as a month, okay, just to make things more concrete. How many jobs are lost per month? Well, uh, we know the job separation rate, that's S, that's telling us how many jobs uh, that's telling us the rate at which jobs are, are destroyed per month and how many jobs are in the firm, it's L. So that L is the number of jobs, S is the rate at which each job is destroyed, S times L is the number of jobs that are, uh, you know, number of work, let's say, I think it's probably clear, more clear to say that it's the number of workers that are lost uh, per, uh, per month, okay, so that could be people who quit, People who are dismissed because they are not qualified, people who move away, people who retire, these are the number of workers who are lost. Okay. Uh, so, do you remember when we computed the labor supply, we made that assumption that labor market flows are balanced, which means that at any point in time, the number of workers who enter unemployment is the same as the number of workers who exit unemployment, which allows us to have a stable level of unemployment and employment. We don't have some uh, strange um, dynamics happening. Um, so here we make the same assumption. Of course, uh, if the number of workers who enter unemployment is the same as the number of workers who um, leave unemployment, it has to be the case that the number of workers who enter employment is the same as the number of workers who exit employment. Um, so this is just the two sides of the same coin. So here we're going to assume again that uh, labor market flows Um, are balanced, um, and of, but we're going to apply that assumption at the level. We're going to apply that assumption at the level of the firm. Uh, so, for a firm, what does that mean? It means that um, the number of jobs, or if you want, the number of workers that leave. During a month is equal to the number of workers um, that are recruited during a month. Okay, so we let, this is just the same assumption as before. We have the same number of workers that live and numbers that are recruited, which means that our firm is able to keep a constant size. You know, inflows into the firm and outflows from the firm are just the same. And so our firm is able to keep a constant size at any point in time. Okay. Um, so we said that the number of workers who were lost were S times L. So what that implies, using the fact that the labor market flows are balanced, the number of workers that are recruited every month, it has to be S times L. From our assumptions. 
Okay, so we know that we want to recruit S times L workers. Uh, so now the question is, um, how many vacancies does the firm post to be able to recruit S times L workers? So, well, the firm has to post enough vacancies So the firm must post enough vacancies to secure S times L recruits, right? Okay. Um, and the number of vacancies we call it V to secure that S times L recruit. Okay. So the question is, when you post a vacancies, how successful are you? Well, this is something we saw when we studied the matching function. We know that. Each vacancy is filled, uh, you know, at a rate that we call Q of theta. So that means that each vacancy is filled with probability Q of theta you know, per unit time. So here maybe per month. So you want S times L recruits per unit time. Uh, your vacancy is filled with a probability Q of theta per unit time. And so what is the number of vacancies that you must post? From this we infer that the firm must post V equal to S times L. That's the number of uh, recruits that you want divided by Q of theta. Okay. Uh, that's the number of vacancies you must post so that once you do Q of theta times V, Q of theta times V is the number of vacancies times the probability that the vacancy is filled. So Q of theta times V is the number that's equal to the number of recruits that the firm will be uh, able to make. And so Q of theta times V is going to be equal to S times L if you post V equal to S times L times Q of theta uh, vacancies. Okay? Um, so it's just the firm is just, uh, you know, it's just doing a little reasoning, knowing how many workers they want and knowing the probability to fill each vacancies. They are just backing out how many vacancies they need to post. All right. So the, first need to, the firm needs to post this many vacancies. S times L times Q of theta. So, how many workers do you need to devote to the task of filling these vacancies? Well, we know that each vacancy requires R workers. So, the number of workers devoted to uh, recruiting is going to be R times V, because each vacancy requires R. And that's going to be R times S times L divided by Q of theta, uh, given the number of vacancies that are posted. So that's what we have. And then if we want, uh, right, and what we're looking for is not to express everything in terms of recruiters and uh, producers. So R times V, that's the number of, uh, that we have here, that's the number of workers devoted to recruiting, so we, we call that capital R. And then L, we know that L is the number of workers, it's composed of recruiters and producers. So this is R times S divided by Q of theta times, so L is just R plus N, number of workers plus producers. And here, as you can see, looking at the, this side of the equation, and this side of the equation, now you have just an equation that defines R, the number of recruiters, implicitly. So what you can do here is, for instance, you can divide uh, the left-hand side and right-hand side by R. So what you get? You get that 1, which is R divided by R, is equal to R times S divided by Q of theta times 1 plus uh, N divided by R, Oh, 
Well, I guess there is a simpler way to deal here. Instead of dividing by r, let me divide by n everything. So what do we get? Once we divide by n, we get r divided by n is r. Here, we're going to have also uh, apologies for the mixer. Here we have r divided by n, and then we have n divided by n, we have 1. Okay? Once I divide everything by n, so here what I've done is I've divided everything by n. Okay? And then, uh, by definition, r over n, that's just our recruiter-producer ratio. So we get that tau is equal to r times s divided by q of theta times 1 plus tau. All right, great. And now we're in a position, if we wish shuffle term, we're in a position to compute uh, an expression for tau. So how do we do that? Well, we can just reshuffle everything on one side. So we get that tau times, so what do I get? I have a 1, and then I have a tau that comes from the other side. So minus r times s divided by q of theta is equal to r times s divided by q of theta. Now you can just uh, simplify things a little bit. You can multiply left hand side and right hand side by q of theta. So you get that tau times q of theta minus r times s is equal to r times s. And now you get a very simple expression for the recruiter producer ratio. Great, so we get that the rupture producer ratio tau, which in fact will depend on the labor market tightness, is equal to r times s divided by q of theta minus r times s. So that's going to be something um, that's quite an important result and we'll use it many, many times. So let me highlight that. Oops, sorry. Let me do that properly. Great. Okay, so we have our expression for the Rupster producer ratio. Okay, great. So that's a very important first step. Next step, so we get this new expression. We have to delve a little bit into it and figure out what are the properties of that Rupster producer ratio. And then we have to um, try to understand what it means in reality try to map the mathematical properties of the object with uh, a natural interpretation for what it means in the real world.